Review, which is a name that I am suddenly growing to like more and more. And I really hope that no one else is using it and I'm not like plagiarizing, but I'm way too lazy to find out. <clears throat> I'm back. I uh, eliminated a light because it was reflecting off my glasses. Okay, so I am here in front of this incredibly fake fireplace because I am not at home. I am in Marshfield, Wisconsin. And I had a review to do for you all. Now I'm going to warn you. You might want to take a moment, breathe, hold your loved ones close to you. Because we are about to talk about another book that I liked. I know, right? Holy shit. This is like two books almost in a row that I liked. I think there's something wrong with me. Better get that checked. So I don't have the book with me, so I am going to uh, read the description on Goodreads, which I believe is the same as the description on the back. Jasper Jazz Dent is a likable teenager, a charmer, one might say, but he's also the son of the world's most infamous serial killer. And for dear old dad, take your son to work day was year-round. Jazz has witnessed crime scenes the way cops wish they could, from the criminal's point of view. And now the bodies are piling up in Lobo's nod. In an effort to clear his name, Jazz joins the police in a hunt for a new serial killer. But Jazz has a secret. Could he be more like his father than anyone knows? Bum bum bum! And actually, you know I often pick on the backs of books, but that one actually kind of just sums it up, like, perfectly. Alright, so let's talk about I Hunt Killers. I am going to try and keep this fairly spoiler free because I do want you all to go read it. Um, there might be a few very minor spoilers. You know, again, if you hate to have anything, any tiny little aspect of a book spoiled, then stop this. But if, if a few little bits, bits and bobs here and there don't bother you, then carry on, gentle viewer. You know, I've noticed, although this book is not a dystopian story, which I read a lot of, it is a mystery, and it's very intense, and there's like urgent danger happening, and I seem to, I seem to like that. I don't know, I, I liked that in um, The Fifth Wave, and I like that in this, that it is like, not necessarily fast paced, but there's always this sense of underlying danger that is happening, and I, I dig that, I guess. All of the characters in this book are unusual, but none of them feel gimmicky. Which is really, it's really cool how they do it, because they're not, none of them are your standard YA characters. I mean, this is set in modern times, and this is set, you know, in a slice of life type scenario, although it's not really slice of life. Um, you know, with a high school, and with, you know, his grandmother, he lives with his grandmother, and none of his friends and none of the characters are the stereotypical ones that you find, and and usually when that happens, when authors try to go away from the stereotype, they end up with characters that feel super gimmicky, but these ones don't. These all feel like real people somehow, so good job. They're Barry Liga? Liga? I don't know. I, I don't know how to pronounce his name. The main character in this book, Jazz, really struggles with his identity, and of course I love identity struggles. It's like one of my favorite things. But it is because he, his father was a serial killer and a sociopath, and Jazz can see those tendencies in himself very strongly, and he wonders with every action he takes, did I take that, was I nice to that person because I was, I am a nice person, or was I nice to them because I'm manipulating them? Jazz is very manipulative, and he realizes it a lot of the time, and he will manipulate anyone without necessarily thinking it's wrong. The book does a great job of making you wonder about Jazz as he wonders about himself, like, who am I? In this book, a little bit of a spoiler here, Jazz has a girlfriend and she is awesome because all of the characters are awesome. The only thing that makes me wonder a little bit about her, and I put this in the, the things that I like category because it makes me wonder about her, if she is not drawn to him because of his neediness and because of his, like, uncertainty about himself, if she likes to be the one who comes to the to comfort him, the one who's always there for him no matter what. I think that attracts her and I don't think that's necessarily bad that I can notice that and see that and see that that is maybe something because the author never comes right out and says that and I can get behind that. I can get behind figuring stuff out about characters without being told about them. The other thing this book does is avoid all of the tired cliche, shoot myself in the head, romance shit from other books and it does it without seeming forced. So, that's awesome. There is a complete 
pervasive air of dark creepiness to this book, and I love it. Again, like The Fifth Wave, this book feels crafted without feeling cold. I know when I talked about Wicked, I talked about that it felt crafted, but it felt loveless. You can feel the love that was put into this book, and it feels artful. Unlike so many young adult books where you feel like the author just started writing and had no idea what, what the fuck, where they intended to go, or what. It has not happened in a long time that I have found a book that I really did not want to put down. I am the kind of person who can, even if I'm enjoying a book, I can set it down. I'm okay with that. Like, I'll finish a chapter and I'll be like, okay, time to set it down. I have other things to do. I'm not one of those people who stays up until midnight reading a book, whatever. But this one, really, like, when I was, when I would set it down, I would be thinking about it and I'm like, man, I really want to get back to that book. And I'd be excited when I had time to get back to it. So um, that has not happened in a really long time. Most of the time it's like, yeah, I guess it's time to read now. I guess we'll read. All right, I guess it's time to set it down now. This book also ties into live theater, which is something that I also am interested in slash participate in, in that it uh, ties into the play The Crucible, which I've actually been in, so ha. Huh? Um, and it shares a lot of the parallel themes with the Crucible, such as the nature of evil and identity and whether other people's opinion of who you should be makes you who you are. I loved that tie-in. It was, you know, so many books try to tie in with a classic play and they'll be like, oh, Shakespeare, oh, Romeo and Juliet, oh, Hamlet. Crucible was a really interesting choice and I loved it. Okay, so I obviously I started off with the awesome stuff. Let's talk about the less awesome stuff because you know I'm going to find stuff that wasn't as awesome because that's just who I am. Um, there really isn't a lot though. There's like three things, so it's who I am a little bit. The thing that annoyed me the most about Jazz is he spent a lot of time like wondering about his identity and wondering if every action he took was manipulative or if it was real. And you get sick of reading that after a while. Like, it's understandable that this should be something that is always on the character's mind, but as a reader, you're like, okay, we get it. Would you let us just infer that once in a while, you know, and not have to, once again, sink into the... Every time he does something, it's like, sink back into the world that is jazz, and go back to his memories, and go back to his father's voice. And I mean, it's cool, the first several times, but after a while you're like, all right, we've been here. I understand what his drama is. Just mention it maybe, and then move on. This, this is not something that bothered me, but it might bother some people. This book is extremely graphic as far as violence. I mean, it's about serial killers, so what do you expect? Um, so if that bothers you, you might want to steer clear because it is very graphic. It is descriptions of how people are murdered. This book made me legitimately terrified that I was going to be killed because it described what a lot of ser what the, a lot of serial killers have a type, what that type is, um, and I kind of fit into it. So I and how charismatic serial killers are, and how easy it is for you to get them, and prey on your human urges for kindness or your you know if you're in trouble you find somebody who seems like they're gonna help you. This book, while I was reading it, I was just like walking around like, don't look at me, you're probably a serial killer. Don't talk to me, you're probably a serial killer. It made me straight up paranoid, and I still am a little bit paranoid, but on the other hand, I'm a little bit, I think, more aware. <laughs> this author knows a lot, this author knows a scary lot about serial killers and how they think. We might want to keep an eye on this guy. But yeah, it, it made me frightened of everything. And everyone. But if that's what you like, if that's what you will find enjoyable, because I sure did, then definitely check out I Hunt Killers. So yeah, I guess that's it for this review. Next time you see me, I won't have an annoying fake fireplace. I'll be back in my old place, presumably. But I will see you all later. Peace.